previously on Solo Hunters. It's two degrees this morning. I'm trying to hustle. There's a bunch of wolves in here, so I just want to try and stay with these dogs. Some pretty bad rocks up here, so I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. Quite a feeling. Maybe we'll find Fred a cat one of these days. I'm gonna just show you these big buckets we just found. These are these are both lion kills this winter. We ended up finding four different kills. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm zooming. Well sweet. Big old cat. Yeah, he is big. Solo Hunters is being brought to you by. Muzzy Broadheads, bad to the bone. Carbon Express, shoot better. Gorilla Safety Harness, get it on. Quest Bow Hunting, the Bow Hunter's Bow. Badlands Packs, unconditional performance. And Campbell Cameras, relive your adventure. That was a mess. That was a big time mess. Those muzzies, little number. So everything you do, you gotta do by yourself. There's nobody for 50 miles. When I don't have enough food, I just get a little on edge. My favorite backpacking food, dead end. We survived. I missed the sheep with the boat. Now I'm pissed. I'm headed out. I got the tar in my backpack. And uh, it's getting pretty treacherous, so I'm getting ready to put the camera away for the uh, duration of the pack out, probably, just because it is so dangerous. Um, that's one of the things not having a cameraman. You get a lot of close up shots like this or GoPro shots. Um, but, you know, that's also the beauty of it. I don't have a camera crew following me, I'm not doing any recreation, so it's about as real as it's going to get here. And this is probably a first, or actually, I know this is the first. This is the first do it yourself tar hunt in New Zealand, done on public land, ever televised and self-filmed, so uh, there you go, that's what sets solo hunters apart. Uh, if you like it, I'm glad because I'm putting a lot of effort into it. Alright, I'll see you guys at the bottom. Well, the operation here is called Outland Outfitters. Um, they offer pretty much everything New Zealand has to offer. Um, New Zealand is just one of those places that pretty much, if you're a hunter and you love hunting wide open spaces or um, just a variety of game, New Zealand can't be beat. It, it truly is a sportsman's paradise. Um, I've hunted a lot of places around the world and this place is, is by far one of my favorite places to hunt. My operation has uh, pretty much something for everyone. Um, you might see the, this Solo Hunters episode and go, man, that's pretty extreme. I've never seen tar hunting like that on TV. Um, which is good because I, I wanted to show it how guys like myself come out here and tar hunt um, public land. But there's also other options um, for guys maybe older or not, not in as good a shape. Guys that don't really like sleeping under rocks as much as I do. Um, you can do, we have a, a cottage type hunt which is just a, your standard um, new, typical New Zealand ranch house. We go out and hunt um, either free range animals or, or state animals. And, um, and then we also have these public land hunts. And we also have a five-star luxury lodge for hunters to enjoy that maybe want to take their wives or, or just, you know, have a all-around great vacation. Uh, you know, what you normally see is your typical New Zealand hunt of monster stags. Um, those are all, you know, I hate to break it to everyone, but New Zealand doesn't grow giant stags in, in the wild. So if you ever see a big stag on TV, um, that's, that's a high-fenced animal. But we do have some pretty big estates that are great hunts no matter what. Um, if you do want to do that typical New Zealand big stag hunt, um, we have pretty much everything for everyone. Yeah, we just got a monster stag down. This is one of those places that um, it's so unique, it's so beautiful, it's such an experience that you don't really want to just come do this um, by yourself. You want to bring friends and family and uh, enjoy it with a lot of people because it's, these, are, these are memories that we build here that are going to last a lifetime. Um, you know, on, on all of our guided hunts, pretty much everything's 100% success. Um, we do offer a drop camp type hunt if you want to come out and do like, like we've done on Solo um, this last episode. This is rough, um, dangerous, and 
hard hunting. The drop camp hunt isn't for everyone. We really screen the people that are allowed to go on that. Most people think, oh, I get to pick the outfitter, but in this case, the outfitter gets to pick his hunters. Um, so if it is something you're interested in before you even inquire about it, you know, we ask that you have a lot of a lot of hunting experience in mountain terrain. You know, the more that you've done on your own, the better. Um, even then, it's still going to be probably one of the toughest hunts you'll ever go on. The official knives of solo hunters are from Outdoor Edge. Quality knives and tools for the big game hunter. I got stuck, buried the truck in a bog. Sometimes that happens where the trip goes from a fun hunting trip to a survival trip. I like to create my own adventures. It's gonna be a beautiful hunting day if this stops raining. Solo Hunters is being brought to you by Big Green Targets. Go big, go green. I was driving in to the back country. I'm about mm, probably 40 miles off the beaten path up this canyon. Um, and then I uh, got stuck, buried the truck in a bog. Um, so I'm stuck here until the morning. My little menu and map deal here it says that there's a uh, hut right up here a little ways. Um, I can kind of see this ridge here and I have my GPS. Uh, it doesn't show the hut on it, but I know there is a hut up here somewhere. So uh, I'm stuck for now. I think what I'm gonna do is try to find this hut in the dark. It's about a half a mile, I'm guessing. All right, found a trail. I'm pretty sure it leads to the hut here. So I'm just gonna keep walking up it. Should be a hut here somewhere. I'm gonna say the name of the hut. <laughs> Nice, found the hut. I don't think anyone's in it. Ooh, looking in the window. Right inside. Ooh, home sweet home. Uh, this will work better than sleeping in the car. Some beds, so perfect. Brought my sleeping bag and spend the night, get the truck out in the morning, maybe shoot one of those stag that was roaring over there. Well, it's daylight, but unfortunately, it's been raining all night. So, at least they've got in the shelter. Yeah, nice. Nice little hut we got here, but I think it's going to be a lot harder to get in that vehicle out now that it's been raining all night. This could be the whole hunt here in this hut, waiting to dig the car out. Sometimes that happens where the trip goes from a fun hunting trip to a semi-survival trip. Um, got lucky and got stuck where this hut was. Survival in the bush, it says. That'll be me. <laughs> The rain has finally ceased. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this will stay clear and I can find a tar or a deer or something. Because I have no meat. I have a few, uh, some bread, some dehydrated noodles, and some crackers. Uh, I got my shotgun. I'm going to try to shoot some rabbits or something. And uh, hopefully, I can get out and hunt a little bit. Oh, the cabin's going up. It is gorgeous when that rain lifts. Oh, man. This is some remote, beautiful country here. Unfortunately, I'm spending it digging out a vehicle and not hunting, but uh, really couldn't even get out before this. There's new snow on the tops of the mountains. It's gonna be a beautiful hunting day if this stops raining. All that water coming down these guts is just from this recent rain. So you can see how the river floods up really fast. Hopefully it'll stop. Give it a couple days to dry out. I gotta go pick Tim up from the airport in a couple days. Uh, he may be sitting in the airport twiddling his thumbs if I can't get out of here. <laughs> uh, he'll figure it out. You know, for me, being a guide is, is my dream job. I get to be hunting pretty much every day of the year that I can. Um, that's one of the reasons I, I came to New Zealand in the first place, to just extend my season out. Um, but whether guiding here, guiding in the States, 
uh, no matter what, I get to be hunting. And there's nothing I love more. Uh, to take people out and to show them new things and to help them get their animals, it's, it's just as exciting for me as if I was the one pulling the trigger. Way to go! When I'm not hunting with clients, I like to hunt by myself because, you know, I, I get to hunt with people all the time. So, you know, doing it by myself is, is really what makes it exciting for me and, and not necessarily the kill of the animal, but I like to create my own adventures and, uh, and I, I try to do that when I'm alone. It's part of the adventure for me. I don't, I like living on the edge. I, regular hunting is just not exciting. You gotta, you gotta push yourself a little bit, you know, or at least I do. I know, I mean, I, I do a lot of survival stuff and I know how to handle myself in the woods, uh, but because I do that and like that a little bit of adrenaline rush when things don't go right, I make lots of stupid decisions that normal people shouldn't make. In the Bag is brought to you by Badlands Packs, unconditional performance for unconventional hunters. With the weather like it is, when you leave the truck in the morning and it's dark, you never know what kind of weather you're going to get. It's exactly why you need this gun cover on your gun. You can see the inside of my action, the rifle, everything is perfectly dry and away from the, from the snow. It has this waterproof lining on the inside to keep any water from penetrating in. Real heavy duty, soft uh, outer shell. The nice thing about it is my gun is nice and protected and if I do need to get it off real quick to make a shot, it comes off pretty darn quick. There's a lot of different ways you can get it off quick. Depends on kind of how you're sitting. It goes on real easy, one-handed, and covers the entire part of the gun. If I'm hiking along, I need to get it off quick, then uh, I just reach down and grab the bottom of it and pop it off just like that. Solo Hunters is brought to you by Carbon Express. Shoot better. Shoot Carbon Express. I just spotted a bull tar up this basin. It'd be nice to shoot him, and then I have something to eat. I'm gonna go after him, spend the night on the mountain, and it's gonna be pretty dang miserable. Oh. Solo Hunters is brought to you by Moultrie, total game management. <clears throat> I just spotted a bull tar up this basin up in front of me. Uh, the fog's still rolling in and out. Um, now I'm in debate mode whether to go after him or not. He's, well, he's about two hours up the canyon from where I'm at. He's a good ways away, plus I gotta cross a river. Um, I know I could probably get to this one, but it's probably gonna involve me sleeping up there, uh, which is fine. Wish I had a tarp with me, but I have my rain gear and I can hunker up under a tree or something. Um, I won't be able to start a fire, it's probably too wet. I'm going to see what he does here for the next 15 minutes or so and then make a plan. I'm going to cross the river and get all wet though. I want to make sure I shoot one. <laughs> make it worth it. That tar actually just made the decision for me. I was headed over there. I'm going to cross the river and head up after him. Um, I figured I'd just have to sleep up there. It would have been nice to shoot him and have something to eat. But, uh, I started heading that way and he just started moving up that valley. Um, he started feeding up and not down. Well, I got the vehicle to this other hut. Had to cross a few rivers and such. Uh, but she's here and I'd seen that tar up across here uh, just to the left of that glacier. Um, we'll just blow it a little bit up in that canyon. so. I may just hike up there and, and set up for this evening, hoping he comes back. They're kind of patternable, um, you know, normally where you see them one day, they'll, they kind of keep to that pattern unless disturbed. I'm uh, heading up to where I saw that tar last night. Uh, it's about midday, so I'm hoping that he'll come back down that same chute. Uh, pretty big gorge in here. I'm gonna try to get up across from where I saw him. Uh, there's this river behind me, but uh, I'm going to have to cross it. It's a little deep, probably a little lower than waist deep. I'd like to not have to get wet if I can help it first right off the bat. I 
came over the ridge here to where this tar was uh, yesterday and it is unbelievable in here. Crystal blue water flowing down, a glacier in the background. I mean, this water is just straight off this glacier. This has to be one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. It's, it's really breathtaking. I, I don't think you can get anything more beautiful. Cliffs coming up and just green. Um, it's amazing. I, if I don't see a tar, this was worth the price of admission right here. It's, oh man, right now is decision time. Um, if I'm gonna make it back, I have to start before it gets dark, otherwise I won't make it off the mountain. And right now is the time that I said I would turn around. Uh, the dilemma is, I just spotted a Mobitar up on the mountain. And uh, there's a few good bulls in there. And I think I could get there before it gets dark. You know what? I'm going to go after these tar. I'm going to go after them, spend the night on the mountain, and it's going to be pretty dang miserable. Oh, I just came down this thing about 90 miles an hour. It's stupid. I'm going to walk up here, see what I can see. I could have freaking killed myself right there. I bit off more than I could chew tonight. I can't make it there. There's a gorge that I can't get through. They've moved up into the cliffs. Um, I'd have to crawl across a waterfall and one tar ain't worth dying for, I'll tell you that much. This week's solo hunter challenge comes from Jason Matzinger of Bozeman, Montana. Well guys, as you can see, it's day four out of five of our caribou hunting trip here and we woke up, it was just foggy, windy, raining. I'm out by myself today try to film and shoot if that's possible. And I snuck up on these, got the camera set up and they're bedded here, so I think I'm just gonna sit and wait them out. I don't even know what to say. I'm by myself, I'm just out here surrounded. Look at the size of this thing. Oh my gosh. Learn more about finding your career in the outdoor television industry and sign up for professional classes at Campbell Cameras. Solo Hunters is brought to you by Caribou Gear and Hunting House Rifle Covers, your gun's best protection against the elements. I forgot my earplugs. I had to stuff some tissue in my ears because my gun with the muzzle brake is pretty loud. and. 762 yards away, one shot dropped him. For more information on our approved solo outfitters, go to Outland Outfitters and MontanaOutWest.com. Solo Hunters is being brought to you by Muzzy Broadheads, Bad to the Bone, Carbon Express, Shoot Better, Gorilla Safety Harness, Get It On. Quest Bow Hunting, the Bow Hunter's Bow, Badlands Packs, Unconditional Performance, and Campbell Cameras, Relive Your Adventure. I just dropped them. I'm coming down the mountain. I decided to give up on those ones. A big bull tar is feeding down toward me. I get set up on this rock here, and 762 yards away, one shot dropped him. I don't have time to get up there tonight, but uh, I'm gonna head down, try to get back to camp, grab a pack frame, and then come back first thing in the morning and try to find him. Oh, sweet. Um, I finished all my river crossings and I'm home free for the night. I'm excited, that was a great evening. Get him packed out and head, head back. And then go pick up Tim. I'll drop him off somewhere and I'll go out and hunt myself as well and do a little solo action in the Southland here. New Zealand at its finest, this is just a blast. These tar is pretty dangerous though, I will say that much. So, get my pack frame and, uh, and try to hustle and get him out, get a few pictures, hopefully. Those clouds back there look pretty menacing. Uh -huh. So hopefully we stay high and, 
and don't bring too much precipitation because they came in light today. Let's uh, get her done. I am up here. This is a long ways up. I remember these rocks, so I know he's pretty close in here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to review the footage if I can. There's some white rocks and he crossed it. <laughs> Actually, he's just right there. I walked past him. Now oh, they blend in. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go down to him and check this out. Tar down. Let's go pick him up. Go pro. Oh, he's just got a beautiful cape on him. Nice blonde tips. Uh, he's just awesome. This is all 100% do-it-yourself, public land. Um, I know that st kind of stuff gets hammered over and over, but this is in New Zealand. So uh, I'm pretty proud of him. He's a tremendous trophy. Great cape on him. Um, he's a great bull. So I'm pretty excited. The tar is coming down the mountain on my back. I'm just heading down now, and uh, hopefully I got enough shots to make a good, good episode. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, it was definitely a first. I don't think anybody's ever seen a do-it-yourself New Zealand tar hunt. And it is rough and rugged. See you at the bottom. Almost there, almost to the bottom. Tar in hand. That's good. Last crossing. Home free. The waiter's off. Man, I stink. Oh, crap. The Solo After Show is brought to you by Survive Outdoors Longer. Expect the unexpected at OutdoorChannel.com. I don't filter my water. No need for it most of the time. If there's no beavers, you won't get sick. I remember when I was a kid, my parents caught me drinking out of a creek in the uh, cow pasture. And I'd probably done it hundred times before that and didn't even know it was bad. I have had Giardia once, but uh, don't, don't drink out of it and get sick and then blame me, but.